Welcome back, shooters. This is Thomas from Backscatter, and today we are looking at the latest flagship strobes from Ike Light, the DS230 and the DS232. Both are Ike Light's brightest strobes to date and are the brightest circular flash tube strobes we have tested yet. The DS230 and 232 have the same wide, even, warm flash beam Ike Light is known for. They have manual control, access to Ike Light's dependable and accurate TTL system, SOS mode, a target light function, and a video light mode in the case of the DS232. In this video, we're gonna break down both of these strobes and everything you need to know about them and how they compare to all the other strobes on the market right now. Let's jump back over to Backscatter Studio for a closer look and determine what you get for your money with the DS230 and the DS232. Lined up in front of me are all the most popular strobes for underwater photography that we sell here at Backscatter. Lined up in price from the least expensive all the way up to the most expensive. Now, all these different strobes have their own specs stated by the manufacturers, but we don't always know how the manufacturers develop those specs. We put every strobe that we sell through our own set of controlled in-house tests to perform a fair basis for comparing any given strobes. We'll get into the details of what we found out about both Ike Light's performance in that section of the video. For now, let's talk about its price and where they fit into the lineup. The Ike Light DS230 is $1295, and the DS232 that's added video light is $1495, placing them in the middle of the higher end of the lineup. As you can see, all the strobes over here have circular flash tubes. Circular flash tubes produce a wide, even beam and typically have warmer color temperatures compared to narrower, cooler, straight flash tubes. Because of their higher energy demands, they do need large batteries like the Ike lights over here. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. Both strobes include a strobe head and battery pack, a battery cap cover for travel, a charger, and a pre-installed ball mount, as well as a bulkhead cap. With big power comes a big-bodied strobe. These strobes are on the larger side and are bigger than many other strobes on the market. They are relatively heavy, weighing in at 2.7 pounds or 1.2 kilograms in air, but due to the plastic construction, they are much lighter in water weighing in at 0.3 pounds or 138 grams. This makes them barely negative, so you'll only need to add a small amount of flotation to keep your rig neutral underwater. The DS230 and DS232 are composed of two pieces. The strobe head, which includes the exposure dial, and the battery pack, which includes the power dial. If we check out the front of the DS230, it has a circular flash tube and a single LED target light in the center. The DS232 has a slightly different strobe head with a built-in 2500 lumen video light. The video light is the only difference between the DS232 and the DS230. Any accessories compatible with either strobe, such as the dome diffuser or a fluorescence excitation filter, are simply pressed into place. The ball mount is located on the bottom of the strobe in a slot and is secured by a single Phillips head screw. Something you should be aware of is that the screw can easily become loose on the ball mount. You need to check the screw often to make sure it is secure. Next to the ball mount, we'll find the strobe sink port. Both strobes are electronic sink only and have a single Ike Light style bulkhead. Even though most shooters these days use fiber optics, the strobes are not fiber optic ready and will require an additional converter in order to fire with a fiber optic system. We'll cover the converter in just a little bit, but first, let's talk about the electronic sync system. In order to sync the DS230 or the DS232 with your camera out of the box, you will need an electronic sync cable with appropriate ends for your strobe and your housing's bulkhead. If your housing has electronic sync, you can use Ike Light's proprietary TTL system. 
hardwired TTL systems are more accurate than most slave or copycat TTL systems. To use iClight's TTL, you will need several additional parts specific to your camera and housing in order to function. iClight TTL supports all the major camera brands as well. All right, so now let's talk about using fiber optics with the iClight strobes. As I mentioned before, the iClight strobes do not have a fiber optic port and will need a fiber optic converter, which is an additional $150 a piece. The converter will allow you to fire the strobe manually and it attaches to the electronic sync bulkhead. If you want to use TTL with fiber optics, iClight's got you covered with Olympus RC converters and one for Canon TTL, which is more accurate than slave TTL systems. iClight also has optional optical remote sensors and extension cords for remote shooting. These attach to the electronic sync bulkhead and can be used for creative off-camera lighting. If you are unsure of what option is best for you, just give us a call or send us an email and we can find the best solution. The Ike Lights both use a proprietary rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery pack included with a strobe. A spare battery will cost you $250. Large battery packs like this are common with circular flash tube strobes and are needed to meet their greater power demands, which really can't be met with double A's. Ike Light does not have an exact count on the flashes per charge, instead stating that the DS230 and 232 can fire over 300 flashes on a single charge. Now, let's check out how to remove and install the battery pack. To remove the battery pack, first make sure the strobe is set to off. Then slide the toggle lock downward to unlock and flip it upward. Next, rotate the toggle 90 degrees counterclockwise and then separate the battery from the body. On the inside face of the battery pack, you will find the charging port as well as the sealing O-ring. iClight does not recommend removing or greasing the battery O-ring since it's a face seal and it doesn't require any grease. This is also why iClight does not include any O-ring grease in the box with the strobe. Make sure the O-ring is clean and free of debris, hair, or sand prior to connecting it back to the strobe. To charge the battery, plug it into the included charger and the charger will change from red to green once the battery is fully charged. To reattach the battery pack, line up the contact pins. It is really important in this step to make sure that everything is lined up properly or else the battery can be hard to remove. Next. Press the battery to the body and rotate the lock toggle 90 degrees clockwise, then flip it downward. The battery is now locked into place and the strobe is ready to go. In the unlikely event that water does contact the internal sections of the strobe head and battery, never reuse the battery and make sure to dispose of it properly. Then clean and dry the strobe head contacts as best as possible. Overall, if you ever find water in your battery compartment, the best thing to do is to give us a call and we'll recommend the best course of action for repair. Both the DS230 and the DS232 have a simple control scheme using two dials, one for power setting on the battery half of the strobe and the other for exposure setting on the strobe head. Turning the strobe on will power the strobe and allow you to use the DS230 or DS232 in manual or TTL based on your setup and the settings on the exposure dial. In manual mode, the exposure dial has 10 power levels and half stop increments. This same switch is also used to put the Ike Light strobes into TTL and it's easy to do so accidentally if you're trying to locate full power and you're not looking so it's always a really good idea to double check your exposure setting. TTL exposure compensation is controlled by the camera itself. We prefer this method rather than other brands that adjust compensation using a dial on the strobe. Using in-camera compensation will change both strobes at once, which really streamlines the process. Strobes with compensation controls can easily be placed in the wrong position, giving you overexposed or underexposed images. If you find yourself wanting to change one strobe's compensation over the other, you're better off shooting manual anyway. 
The strobes don't have a single button to press to power on the target light. Instead, you have to switch the mode to on with light. This functions the same as on and turns on either a 205 lumen target light with the DS230 or a 500 lumen version with the DS232. The target light has a single intensity and will run continuously in this mode. When in on or on with light, the number two fuel gauge light becomes your ready light and it will display a solid red light when the flash is fully recycled and ready to fire again. So to check battery life, you'll need to switch the mode to battery with light. If the fuel gauge lights up one, two, and three, the strobe has 75 to 100% power. If two and one are lit, the strobe is at 50 to 75%. If just one is lit, the strobe is at 25 to 50% power. And if no lights are visible, the strobe is at zero to 25%, and it's probably a good time to change your battery. If you turn the exposure dial to TTL in this mode, the LED will blink an SOS pattern. With the DS232, battery with light will also function as the strobe's video light mode. The DS232 has three different power levels and they're adjusted using the exposure control. The video light is at 2,500 lumens at full, then it switches to medium power at minus two and then low power at minus four. The video light has a beam angle of about 140 degrees and it's highly diffuse. Due to the 2500 lumen output and diffuse quality of the strobe, the video light is best used for extreme close-ups or if you're shooting in dark environments. When powering the strobe off, you can use a lock switch to help keep the strobe from accidentally turning on during travel. Overall, the controls are large and easy to manipulate, even with thick gloves. Both dials click into place, and it's very clear you've made a change on either dial. The dials are also not infinite and have clear stopping points, so you won't lose your place. The controls are located on the right side of the strobe. Underwater, reaching the dials and easily seeing what you are set to is a little hard with just a quick glance. Since the controls are located on the right side of the strobe, they do change location based on your strobe's positioning. If the strobe is ball mount up, the controls are over on the left side. And if it's ball mount down, the controls are back on the right side. This can make locating the controls without looking for them a little difficult, but it's something that most shooters will get used to after just a couple of dives. Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying this video. You know, you can join our family by buying your underwater photo and video gear from us here at Backscatter. Every purchase includes free lifetime tech support, will beat any price hands down, and we ship worldwide daily. Our in-house authorized warranty service center has you covered for any maintenance and repairs. Here at Backscatter, we dive, shoot, and service everything we sell. Whether you're point and shoot or professional, we look forward to helping you meet your underwater imaging goals. Now back to the video. The first performance-based attribute of the Eichlite DS230 and DS232 we'll check out is brightness. Eichlite uses watt seconds as their main measurement of power for their strobes, and both strobes are rated at 213 watt seconds. Now, watt seconds tells us about electrical power going into the strobes, but not the brightness of the light leaving the strobe. At Backscatter, we measure all strobes using guide numbers, which measures the brightness of the strobe light itself. We take every strobe that we sell into a controlled testing environment underwater using a light meter in a custom housing. The light meter is set to ISO 100 and it's placed one meter away from the front of the strobe. As a result of these tests, we found the Eichlite DS230 and DS232 to be at guide number 29, making them the brightest circular flash tube strobes we have tested yet. Circular flash tubes are typically wider and much more even compared to straight flash tubes. Even without a diffuser, circular flash tubes can easily spread their light over a wide area without running into hot spots or gaps in your lighting. But we always test every strobe underwater to see exactly what their flash beam looks like. As you can see, the Eichlite has a very wide and even beam with no harsh edges, 
making it ideal for wider scenes and subjects. This is what Eichelite round flash tubes have been known for for decades, and the newer line of strobes are no exception. Overall, the beam is nice and wide, but not so wide that backscatter becomes difficult to manage in lower visibility scenes. This combined with the overall brightness of the strobe is extremely impressive, and it's a major reason why shooters have picked Eichelite strobes time and time again. Eichelite does offer an optional dome diffuser for wider and an even more even flash if you're shooting a really wide scene. Dome diffusers will reduce some of the flash output of the strobe, which is good to keep in mind, especially if you're shooting in a high ambient light environment. Eichelite does not have any beam restrictors or first party snoots available for the strobe. However, Retra does offer a snoot for the DS230. Flash duration is the big caveat for the Eichelite strobes. Let's venture into camera nerd territory and talk about what flash duration is and how it affects the strobe. Flash duration is how long the flash tube is lit up when the strobe fires. This is something that's measured in hundredths of a second. Flash duration and shutter speed are directly related. Strobe flash durations are typically faster than the camera's flash sync speeds, allowing you to change your shutter speed without affecting the appearance of the flash in the image. If the flash duration is longer than the shutter speed, then the shutter will cut off the full effect of the strobe, resulting in a partially lit image. This is because the shutter will close before the flash has had a chance to fully illuminate the scene. The Ike light has the slowest flash duration we have tested at 107th of a second at full power. If you shoot faster than 1 100th, you will have diminished flash in your image since the shutter speed is faster than the light leaving the strobe. Now let's see what happens when we change to a higher shutter speed at full power. At 1 100th, the flash duration has the full effect of the strobe. At higher shutter speeds, the overall exposure will darken because the flash duration is now slower than the shutter. When is this a problem? Usually, where you need a lot of light out of the strobe is to overcome high ambient light, such as shallow reefs and sunballs. When shooting in high ambient light conditions, you need a faster shutter speed to knock down the ambient light in order for the flash to outcompete it and light the image. In dark shooting situations, flash duration doesn't matter much since you don't need faster shutter speeds and are not competing with a ton of ambient light. So if you're shooting in a wreck, a cave, or cold water, you can use the full power of the flash at 1 100th and get the full power out. With all that extra power, you can turn down the flash for a faster duration. At minus 0.5, it'll sink at 1 200th, and at minus 1, it'll sink at 1 320th. The great thing about the Ike lights is that they're still bright at these levels, with minus 0.5 still being brighter than all other circular flash tube strobes. Color temperature is measured in degrees Kelvin, with higher values being cooler looking and lower values being warmer looking. We always test the color temperature in air because once you go underwater and you have ambient light mixing in, it can give you a false reading. We use a certified industrial color spectrometer to measure color temperature and found that the Eichelite DS230 to be at 5400 Kelvin. This is very close, but not quite as warm as the 5000 Kelvin stated in the specification, but it will provide great color replication as it's really close to natural daylight at 5500 Kelvin. Overall, we have always been happy with the color and quality of light from Eichelite strobes. Recycle time indicates how quickly your flash is ready for another shot. Manufacturers calculate this differently, and strobes behave differently as well. Some strobes wait for full power recharge before firing again, while others fire as soon as some charge is available. We prefer a strobe that fires regardless of charge, such as the Ike lights. Some light is a lot better than no light, and it can be the difference between keeping or deleting a shot. 
to calculate recycle time, we use a high-speed camera and a light meter to determine the exact time in which the strobe fully recycles. The DS230 and 232 don't have clearly stated recycle times. Instead, it has a published range of 1.2 seconds or faster. At full power guide number 29, we found them to have a recycle time of 2.5 seconds to fully recharge back to the full power level of the strobe. If we fired the strobe at full power as soon as it was ready, the recycle speed was 1.1 seconds, but the flash output was four stops less bright. Remember, if you're gonna compare two different strobes recycle times, make sure you are using equal guide numbers for a fair comparison. So considering the performance, the Eichlite DS230 is a great value for a round flash tube strobe at $1295, and it sits in the middle of the higher end of the lineup. The DS232 is more expensive at $1495, and is worth considering if having a video light is an absolute must. Both strobes are wide, even, fast recycling, and bright, but have a slow flash duration at full power. On the higher end of the lineup, the Ccam 160D is more expensive, heavier, and less bright, but it has a wider, more even flash beam with a faster flash duration. The Ccam also has the added benefit of hardwired TTL for Canon, Nikon, and Sony built into the strobe without any external TTL converters or additional pieces. Just a step down from the Ccam, we'll find the Retro Pro Max. This is also more expensive and less bright, and it lacks a video light like the DS232, but it is fiber optic ready out of the box. It's much smaller with more features and access to more accessories. Overall, the Ike lights are inexpensive round tube strobes with a simple design and a reliable TTL system. The warm, even beam is what Ike light has been known for and why shooters love these strobes, all while producing the brightest circular flash beam we have tested to date. You can always give us a call here or send us a message here at Backscatter, and our team will be happy to walk you through all of these facts and compare the benefits of different strobes and what's going to best suit your underwater photography needs. Remember, your purchases from Backscatter or any of our authorized dealers help us keep making more of these videos. We have free lifetime tech support on every purchase. We ship internationally every day and we dive, shoot, and service everything that we sell. This is Thomas from Backscatter signing off, and I'll see you next time.